Now here's a little program that creates treasure objects and that would be handy, for example, in an adventure game. So let's see what happens when I run this program. And down here, this is what I see. Okay, so notice here that this method called initialize takes two arguments whose values are assigned to the at name and at description variables. In Ruby, if you write a method called initialize, it will automatically be called when an argument is created using the new method. So if you look down here and I create some objects, I call treasure.new and I pass these arguments. Now, those arguments will actually be passed to the treasure class's initialize method. Uh, so, and that's where I assign the values to the new treasure uh, instance variables at name and at description. Now, if you've used other object-oriented languages, you might be familiar with uh, the idea of constructors. A constructor is a special method that creates a new object. In Ruby, new, that's how I call it down here, that's the constructor. However, initialize, that's this method up here, well, that is a separate method that's called immediately after a new object's constructed. So in Ruby, you normally call new to create a new object, but you can initialize the instance variables of that new object in the initialize method. Now, you may notice that in this program, I've got two classes. I've got the thing class up here, and I've got the treasure class. The only feature of the thing class or thing object is its name. Uh, but treasure objects also have a name, so in a way a treasure could be thought of as a special type of thing. Now in Ruby I can make that happen, I can make the link between those two classes by making the thing class an ancestor of the treasure class, and I'll show you how that's done in the next lesson. This little course of Ruby is based on my book, The Little Book of Ruby, which is available from Amazon, and you can download the source code for free from bitwisebooks.com.